Yo, 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 what's up, my people? All right, all right, this is Ed. And it's another live session, episode. I don't know what to call this thing. But divers are getting coffee. Um, it's a virtual IG live Q&A. I'm talking to diverse divers from near and far. Tonight, we are going to South Africa. We're taking him back to South Africa. Mic check, mic check, can you guys hear me? Okay. And we're gonna be talking to Mermaid Zandi at Waiting up, uh, Zandi from Freediving South Africa or f at Freediving ZA. Uh, ZA is a country code for South Africa. Will be joining us very shortly. Uh, it is 8 a.m. Wednesday morning in the time zone in South Africa, it is 11 p.m. Pacific time here in Los Angeles. If you are up and around. Hey Z. How are you? I'm <laughs> good can you hear me? You know? Yes, I can. I can hear you as well. Awesome. Good morning so and I happy Wednesday to you. Thank you so much. Happy morning to you too. So can I tell you the funniest <laughs> story? So I had just set Please. up like... I just set up downstairs and then out of, like out of nowhere, just like the lights all go out and I'm like, what? So <laughs> it's load shedding time. So I quickly ran to like a window. So hopefully um, I don't look like a monster. <laughs> <anymore>. <laughs> no, the, the, the lighting looks great. And I love the color of the hair. Oh, man, you know, I've kind Blue of- Blue like the ocean. Yep, <laughs> yep. If I'm not gonna be in the water, I wanna always have it with me. <laughs> I know, right? And, yeah. and that's one of the things. If we're if we're not diving, well, why not be talking? So that's that's kind of what that's kind of how divers getting coffee started. And welcome aboard, welcome aboard. Are you in Cape Town? I just made the assumption because I saw one of your no. Okay. No, I'm in at the moment. I'm in Port Alfred, but I'm normally based in Johannesburg, which is okay. a. We don't have the ocean there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a long way away. Well, welcome aboard. Um, if anyone has seen this, this is Divers Getting Coffee. And today we're talking to Zandi at Freediving ZA, um, based in South Africa. And you, you had some really cool adventures uh, a couple of weeks ago over the weekend. We'll get to that in a minute. But can you introduce <laughs> yourself, please? Um, I... That, that's always a weird question. Um, my I name know. is Zandi. I'm based in South Africa. I'm a freediving instructor, but I also help. I'm a diversity and inclusion consultant, so I help people dialogue over difficult things. And the most amazing thing is that two of my biggest passions have come together to just to just fill my heart. In every single moment, I'm able to, whether in the water, helping people release the fear that they have for deep waters and just filling that space with love mm. and oh, on the other side, helping people dialogue and helping each, helping themselves hear each other again, releasing the fear and connecting, right? Yeah. It's, it's, it's a phenomenal space to be able to um, live and exist this way. 
Oh, that's awesome. Because under under the waves, you know, as you you are also a scuba diver, right? Yes. Yeah, under the waves, yeah. you know, every, each breath we take, it's uh, just a human breath, and that's one of the most unifying experiences ever. It doesn't matter who you are; if you need air, you will grab out and <laughs> reach out for it. So Absolutely. this is a very interesting junction that that, that we've come to. Kind of, how how did you get into this? How did you, you're, you're a scuba diver, now you're a freediving instructor, you have a huge passion for the ocean, you are a diversity consultant. How did you get into diving? So, so in 2016, I'm going through like the worst, like the worst time you can imagine. And um, man, I don't even mind sharing. So the man says, I want out, I want a divorce. I'm like, what? And then I think, <laughs> you know what, you can have it. And I call up this travel agency and I say, you need to take me away for at least two weeks. I've got X amount of money. Mm. Just make it, make it work. And I end up going to uh, Bali. He arranges this whole trip to uh. Bali. And I, I spend my whole first week surfing. I do nothing else but surf and eat and surf and eat. And uh, the following week, I go to the Gili Islands and that's where I found my next breath, my next life. And um, yeah, and then I, you know, I'm riding my bicycle down to breakfast. And I hear this guy say, snorkel trap, snorkel trap. <laughs> I'm like, you know, I'm like, wait, what? Snork I've always wanted to do that. I didn't even know what that is, but I want to do that. Yeah. So I, you know, I, get, I get off my bike and um, I say, me, 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 you know, and I sign up. And he gives me my little stuff, like my fins, my, my mask, my snorkel. And I'm like, great. <laughs> so we go on the snorkel trip. What do I do now? <laughs> you know, at, at a point, the guy says, um, at a point, the guy says, everybody get ready. And I'm like, what does get ready mean? <laughs> <laughs> what are we talking about? <laughs> and um, and turns out, you know, we just had to put on our stuff, but I just... And this chick was sitting next to me, in front of me, says to me, have you ever, have you ever gone snorkeling before? I'm like, no. <laughs> no. And, <laughs> and she's like, why don't you say something? I'm like, I would have figured it out. I would yeah. have figured it out. And she's like, you breathe in and out through the snorkel because you won't be able to breathe through your mask. And then the guy's like, everybody jump in. <laughs> How I didn't break my head open trying to jump in, but anyway. <laughs> Um, the, then I come back into the country. So hold on. I go from thinking that I'm drowning because mm -hmm. I'm just freaking out. I've never been that, um, I've never been that deep at, to sea, part one, but two, I've never been in water that deep ever. So I go from thinking I'm drowning. Then my head kind of comes back to me. Like, can you please stop being dramatic? This is just another swim. And to our second dive where I'm sitting with the dive master at the bottom of the ocean, picking up these shells, right? Yeah. And looking at him and smiling. And I just, I remember how I had never felt more at home. Mm. I had never felt more at home. And so then I came back into the country and the first thing I had to do was figure out how I was going to be more under there. And the only thing that came up to me was scuba diving. So I said, right. bring it, you know? And then I got all my scuba certifications. Uh, I first did Discover, then I did Open Water, then I did Advanced, then I did Deep, then I did Deep Nitrox. And then somewhere along the way, I was just on Instagram and I see these chicks. Ma, 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 ma. Wow. Having, ha having a party underwater without cylinders. Without cylinders. And I think, what the hell's going on here? What kind of witchery is this? Because I want to be a part of that witchery. <laughs> I, I want part of this this action. That's awesome. That's, and and I, that's how the diving journey started. That is insane. It is very interesting, actually, that um, sometimes our lowest points um, kind of propel us into finding our true self or our true passion or true purpose or things that we actually really um, that really resonate with us because when I started it, it's funny because I'd always been interested in diving and ocean and water but yeah I just never did anything about it um, around the same time actually 2016 maybe 2017 yeah, yeah about the same time I started just kind of like going through a rough time and just like you know what 
Ah, uh, what do I got to lose? Sure, let me check this out. I thought I'll do it occasionally and move on. And next thing I know, I'm like, hmm, next? Okay, yeah, uh, I think I should get the night drop suit. Yeah, sure. Maybe the Rex suit. All right, you know what? I'll just go rescue. You know, let's just go full on dive master. And also, it was a, a way for me to really build my confidence because as a human being, you're not, we're not supposed to be breathing underwater, but it's an amazing feeling to do this. And um, that, that's an amazing story. And <laughs> so you went from <laughs> a random bike ride in Gili Trawangan to diving. That's amazing. I love that place. Um, huge, crazy. If anyone's ever, if anyone hasn't been to Gili Trawangan, I always say there's some islands like Gili, Utila, that are just purely for divers. Obviously, anybody else can go there. But if you're not diving and you go there, I always look at people like, hmm, what are you running from? <laughs> so, but, so. No, yeah, but the, the, the Gili Teas are, like I went to the three Gili Islands and Gili Tea was like, it's a multi, like it's a multiple actually of life. It's the ocean. It's the people, it's the sunsets, mm. it's the bike rides. It's just like a vibe. Everything, everything is like on steroids there. It's insane. Everything. That's awesome. Trey, what's up, Trey? So Trey actually put me on to you. So welcome. I'm glad you're actually watching this. Um, Trey is wondering what you friend. So you went out to, you know, you had the rough time. You went out trying to find yourself, um, eat, pray, love, and then you come up like, yeah, I'm diving now. <laughs> what did your friends say when they found out you were diving? So everyone knows that like with me, at any point, anything is possible. So I'll oh, wow. never forget my, be my best friend turned around and said, you know, I wish I could be like freaking out, but this is you we're talking about. If anybody else, you know, you're the, and I mean, on this trip, i would only taken a backpack for two weeks. So mm. number one, everyone was afraid that I was never coming back. So, and, and <laughs> but also, you know, in the same breath, everyone says, but I wouldn't be surprised. Like mm. you could be in the gillies and then someone says, you know, and I came across a chick called uh, Dorothy, interestingly enough. And she was like, I love to travel. And in between I'll work on a farm picking mangoes and it helps me to be able to travel. Wow. And then this is me, this is me. I could pick mangoes. <laughs> <You're> <laughs> like, <laughs> just, you mean just regular yeah. mangoes? Sure, I'll do it. You know? So it was actually interesting because even my sister just kind of said, you know, but before I started, before I started scuba diving, I was mountain biking. So I'm, I mm. must have been mountain biking for about five years. And at any point, like you could be doing six days over, se you know, covering 700 kilometers over the mountains. So, and everyone didn't get that already. They'd be like, wait, you do a hundred kilometers on, on like your two legs. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah over the yeah. mountain <laughs> under <laughs> you know and everyone would just be like but Zans, like why you know you'd spend eight hours on the bicycle and they're like but why so the whole time just everyone's just like with you um you know you calling us telling us you're in london that would not surprise anybody the question is when are you coming back <laughs> you know <laughs> and i love that <laughs> That's, that's awesome it, it, you know it's funny uh, it reminds me of a funny story where i was telling a friend um very fit guy, you know, soccer player, professional soccer player that, oh, you know, I'm going to hike uh, Mount Dolly, one of the one of the harder hikes around here. And he looks at me like, hiking, isn't that just walking? But, you know, <laughs> sometimes it's a little different. <laughs> but that's 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 an amazing story. Um, So you're very spontaneous and they know you can go out and find exciting things and explore. And that's that's good. Your friends know you. Keep your friends. They're good people. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, no one's ever trying to make me stop. Yeah. I know, right? <laughs> so you learned, you went and did some uh, snorkeling in Gilly. Then you went back to uh, South Africa and you learned, you started scuba diving. Then this eventually transitioned to free diving, which I have a lot of respect for. Um, even as a scuba diver, just, I just look at you guys going minute after minute and i'm like oh my god no at this point i'll be reaching and just ah help me you know? <laughs> um did you what was your experience learning to dive learning to, learning to get used to 
being underwater. Um, your your training. How how was that for you? Did you encounter any challenges? So um, interestingly enough, I don't think I battled so much with the ability to hold my breath more than my head. Right. Mm. So free diving is a lot about switching off the the things that go on in your head. You know, in scuba, you have time to, in scuba, you have time to think and you have time to process. And in the, in the beauty of the most, in the most pristine place you'll ever be in your life, right? But in free diving, you go inside. You know, your dive is a minute, two minutes. Um, and that's me. That's my longest dive, two minutes. And you're kind of like, you go inside and it's the longest, it's an eternity of inside. Wow. So the training has, the training has generally gone well, but there was a time when I was stuck to going towards my instructors. I was just stuck at 23 meters. Whether I had my eyes open, whether I had my eyes closed, whether I checked the computer or not, when I got to 23 meters, the body said, no, everybody started freaking out. Get mm. out, get out, get you know, we need to get back to surface right now. And, um, and it was the most interesting thing because I stayed there for about three months and, and I couldn't figure out what the problem was because I had the breath hold for it. I knew I could do it, but you know, and I, and I realized that I had to let go of the fear. I had this fear of, you know, I don't know if you've heard about like, but when free diving, you go to a place where you start free falling, right? Mm -hmm. It's this, you know, and I think there was a fear that I would free fall past my ability to get back. You know, mm. I would go past my limit. And how would I know if I'm past my limit? So it was that fear, but it was also, you know, turning off everybody else who's like, hey, what are you thinking about? Do you think that, and this is all energy that you, you don't have. And somehow in the practice and just releasing the expectation of this work towards being an instructor and just enjoying and playing, you know, I played into a 28, you know, three months later, and then I played into a 32 and I played into a 34 and you're just like, wait, what, you know, check you, you, you know, and, and that's the crazy bit that when you kind of release these intense expectations, everything comes. Wow. There, there's nothing that is good that is found in desperation, nothing. You know, no matter how much you want anything, nothing good can be found there. And when you release it and you just start to play with what you have and you, you play in your breath and you play in your heart and the whole world comes to you and asks you, what do you want? Because you can have it. You know, you're almost like a safe space for its most magical things because it knows that you will not, there's no desperation attached so it can trust you with it. That's that's. I always say free divers are the most um, the most aqua people, the most mermaids, the most the more the more you, you guys are actually more of the mermaids and mermans than you know scuba divers because we go in where scuba divers were making noise, we're banging tanks, we're breathing hard, and you guys are just going in quietly. Yeah, <laughs> you, you know, yeah. it's so serene. Just, you know, being down there and seeing a free diver just, you know, do their thing. And I just go, wow, that's pretty cool. But <laughs> and, and you mentioned uh, 34, 33 feet, uh, meters. That's over 100 feet. Um, that's, a, that's a long way down. That's a long way down. Yeah. On a single breath. I can't even... You know what? One day, I will probably sit down to maybe try to explore this free diving thing because I yeah. just love the way you just talked about it. The the solitude, the serenity, just being one with the ocean, with the forces, and with nature. It's it's so amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Trey said <laughs> he always comes back with a hundred bar. <laughs> hey, you That's know so, it is so what it is. I also come back with a hundred bar. I, I I take it. I take a full cylinder down to 34 and then I bring it back up. <laughs> Trust me, I'm on it. <laughs> that's, that's awesome. Now, how did you, how did you um, kind of work 
past that fear because I feel like with it, with every major venture, especially with adventure, there's that point where your mind is saying, you know, your mind is saying you, you got to be out of your, you got to be out of this mind because this buddy doesn't want to do it, but your buddy can really do it. And it takes you finding that balance with, you know, your mind and body and soul. So like, just go past it. How did you, what would you tell someone that had the same issue, you know, or the same challenge? I want to say issue, just more of a challenge. What would you tell them now? Release, release the expectation and play. Release hmm. the expectation. At any point, wherever you are, we, we learn best when we play. We learn best when we play. And there's just, there's a magic in releasing the expectation. Can you do it? Yes. Is your body capable? Absolutely. But it's, you know, the mind, the, the big guy at the back of your head, the one who says, mm -hmm. it's time to breathe. It's time to, you know, there's too much carbon dioxide going on. What? Inhale, exhale. You know, that guy has been living in your head for 30 odd years. You know, moving the, reminding you to breathe, reminding you to wake up, you know, helping your eyes open up wider at night, the iris so that you can see clear. This guy has been in control your whole life. And now you are taking back parts that have never been in your control. And you are, and you realize that. And I mean, the first thing is every, every single person that you take out onto the water, the same three things happen. The heart rate slows down. The body gets ready to dive. We become like dolphins. Wow. And, and it's almost like we're like, um, we're like baby dolphins where the mother, you know, the dolphin will go under, but every so often the mother needs to kick it back out to breathe a little bit. And, then, and as you grow, you become more adept to, becoming, to being underwater. Yeah. And, yeah, and, so, and I think that's just it. So for me, let go of the expectation, be in the present moment, and play. And when you play, you will find all your heart's desires. Play, let go, be in the moment. Just take it in. Take it in. That's the, it's something I hear so often, and it's one of the easiest things to forget. You know, we, we go in there, we're trying to experience something different, and we're getting, it can be intimidating, but we're getting yeah. caught up in, Oh my God, you know, but when you just slow down, the real mermaids of the ocean, divers getting coffee. We're having a lot of fun. Thank you. That was a lot of, gen that was a lot of uh, good info. Now <laughs> we'll get to now the most, I was going to ask you what your most, ex what your most interesting experience has been, but I watched your chat with Annie the other day and you were telling her that that is what you were doing currently in that moment or in that time frame, was <laughs> your biggest adventure. So I really want to know. I want to hear about it. Tell me, please. Tell us, tell us, tell us. Um, so I've decided, um, whew, I didn't know you were going to ask me this, but I've decided to travel. So I've always wanted to travel along our coastline while like you know those rv trips where you get to mm. sleep in your car or well, in the rv and you travel and i've decided you know in the midst of this COVID happening um i've been working online which has been fantastic so the main the main work that we do kind of slowed down because it required us to be present right. but then the diversity and inclusion work you know with schools took off so I was able to then do work online, which is fantastic. So then I came up to Port Alfred and then I thought, well, your grandmother is in the direction. She's up there, you know, I kind Keep of going. opened up the map and, and I looked at it and I saw KZN and I'm like, you could drive up to your gran over three months. Uh, what would that look like? You've always wanted to do this. So I'm doing that. <laughs> wow. So, so it's going to be phenomenal. Um, a mixture of, you know, living in, you know, between camping, between lodging, between carring, between, but there, is, there isn't a big budget. So it's going to be a lot of heart and a lot of experience. And, mm. and, I, and I'm excited for it. So, and everyone's like, so, so wait, you're going to take three months. So I tell my, my sister and my best friend, and they're both like, 
Of course. Of course you want Zanz to do that. Zanz is at it again. <laughs> exactly. And it's like, of course you want to do that. And of course you want to do it by yourself. And of course none of us can come, you know. And I'm like, no, but I just, I feel like this is the next place that my heart is calling. Mm -hmm. I'll be next to the ocean. I'll be learning how to spearfish. I'll be surfing. I'll be mm. free diving. I'll be scuba diving. I'll be doing everything that I love. But also just hiking at the top of these massive Transkai mountains and and talking to people and and hopefully attending like village celebrations where mm. there's drums and there's the beating of feet and there's just you know where you just transcend and you kind of leave the ordinary. And then every so often when the client says, I'd like to see you, you rush to like a, you know, to like a coffee shop. And like, you yeah, boo. Your laptop and you, you know, quickly, quickly put your hair up and, hi, how can I help you? <laughs> but, but, but in between just, just the biggest flow and the biggest celebration of life. And that, that, that's what I'm hoping to do. Just the biggest celebration I've ever known, possibly. Oh, that's that's amazing. Kevin said they're gonna miss you. I well, like we're just chatting here. We're just meeting for the first time, having a conversation. And you have such great vibe. You have such great energy. I'm sure your friends out there are gonna miss you. Like when I when I'm when I finally um, get the balls to try free diving, I will come look for you. <laughs> but until then, <laughs> I will be blow, blowing bubbles. Um, and that's one thing I actually do um, really find. That's one thing I envy free divers. Um, one reason I envy free divers, you know, you're going, you're enjoying this van life, going up the coast, having these adventures, um, and you know, you can sight a, you can sight a spot and go, hmm, you know, what's going on there? All right, I need my fins, I need my suit, everything is good, I'm going in. Yeah. But then yeah. in school, you gotta plan extra and find tanks and and that's why that's one thing i that's one reason i really um just appreciate uh the sport of free diving the lifestyle of free, of free divers because uh, it's it's it is one that much closer to nature and also to humanity in a way you know it's, it's a weird balance uh that is i am so excited for you i'm looking forward to following you on your journey and seeing how things go um it will be we're we're here hyping you up gozy gozy what, what? <laughs> <laughs> crazy times you know um if what what month are we september happy new month last quarter of the year this time next last year if somebody had said well you know you're gonna be locked down for half the year or more, eventually um, next year, you would have gone high. Huh? You know, remember December thirty first, you know, New Year's Day, January twenty twenty. We go, whoa, twenty twenty is going to be the best year ever. And then March came, and we're here. Yeah, how's that? How's that been for you? The the the, the lockdown, the pandemic. You know, it, it. You know, well, hopefully, in, in work in. Low, at low points, we kind of find ourselves gravitating to the next thing. So uh, how did that affect your plans um, with everything else you had going on? So, so the interesting thing is, you know, as this lockdown comes up, um, I kind of figure, obviously, our more traditional work stops and mm -hmm. no one's able to move around. And so from the business end, it was really detrimental. But on the personal end, Mm. I had never flowered more, right? So people almost attach, and I think not even just people in general, we like to attach who we are to our work and what we do on the day to day, right? Yeah. When that's yeah. not true, you know, there's you and there's the work that you do and there's the hopes and the income that we attach to our work and the reasoning for why it's important. But what happened with me during lockdown is, I changed everything, you know. Yes, I was indoors, but I went back into routine. So I find life in routine. And routine can be, I can set up routine anywhere. And for me, if I'm able to work out and I'm able to eat clean, 
then I'm able to work and I'm able to think and I'm able to explore. And so over the, you know, from March, I just started working out more. I started eating cleaner. Um, I slept outside for the first time. So I slept outside mm. under the night sky. Um, you know, and I started doing these date nights, just I started doing more work towards loving Zandi more and showing up for Zandi in the way that I think I had never shown up for her before. And I do like to speak in third person, but it just, it helped me to appreciate because we often give this love to anybody and everybody around us. You know, your friends, your sister, you know, your partner, anybody. You're always giving the best love to everybody, but never to yourself. Mm. And, and there was this opportunity to just fill up my cup full. And I did that. And I did that every day. And then I did a cleanse for 28 days, which ended up having me move from being, from eating meat to completely cutting it out and cutting dairy out. So, and yeah, and you know, in between taking photographs and just realizing that at any point we are creating ourselves, we're not attached to only one thing. And right. yes, I love free diving, but I can't free dive right now. So what else, you know, what else can I do? I love photography. I took my camera, exploring with what I could do with it indoors, what I could create inside. Um, and just, you know, writing down my dreams, journaling, building. And I think between all of that, I stopped being apologetic for who I've always been. And just the embracing of who Zandi was has changed everything in my life. Changed everything, including yeah. the blue hair. Changed <laughs> everything. So, so COVID for me has definitely been, you know, a phenomenal time. I think it's been, it's been hard seeing the lives that have been lost through this pandemic, but I'm also most thankful for the lives that were able to recover. Mm. And they are way more than, you know, and it just kind of tells you that at any point, how we look at a, how we look at a situation defines how we move forward. So yes, we were locked down. Yes, we couldn't see our families. Yes, we couldn't, there are many things, but we could also, it was an opportunity to go inside, to do the inner work, look at the things that we could get better at, rest, um, and create and create differently. Um, you know, pray for the souls that leave the earth because I believe that at any point when we are leaving the earth, it's not by mistake. So just the gratitude for the lives that have lived and the lives that are transcending, um, the gratitude for the lives that were able to heal um, and just, just gratitude, you know, just the continuous space of gratitude, gratitude for your breath, gratitude mm -hmm. for the food that you have, gratitude for for everything, just gratitude, actually. Yeah, in, in all forms, shapes, and ways, gratitude for purpose, gratitude for self-love, gratitude for, you know, just a different appreciation in a much different way. Um, yeah, it's been rough, it's been very rough for a lot of people. Um, yeah. But it's also, like you said, the flip side is that, um, uh, many minds have been were forced to look at things a different way and look inside and you know have this ability to reconcile with oneself because it almost felt like nature was finding a way to shut shut things down you you human beings are too crazy stop you know you know take a minute um but it's it's crazy and, and so are you, I know you currently have a blog um, that you, you know, uh, that, that you share content and create content for. Are you looking to shift that into a different brand with Van, Van Life in and your current adventure? Or are you keeping the free diving blog as is? I'm cur curious about that and trying to see how, either way, we're consuming your content. <laughs> either way, we're looking forward to what you're doing. <laughs> That, 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 that's a good question. So I often find, like, I like to separate uh, Freediving ZA from mm -hmm. Zandi, just because Zandi is, you know, at the end of the day, Freediving ZA, I teach there, I want people to get inspiration, I want people to try something new. And Zandi is all of the woman that she has ever been. So in between 
you know, finding me working out. You might find something about diversity and inclusion. You might find me, I often just speak my mind as it is, and I almost want to try and keep the two separate. Now, I don't know if I'm going to, I, I don't think I'll be posting anything about my trip under free diving ZA because I just want to mm -hmm. keep it a little bit pure on that side. But I will be posting a lot under Zan Rafi and I might be posting some stuff on YouTube. So I have a second YouTube channel. So I think I'm going to post the content on there and probably blog on my second blog as well. Yeah. Yeah. So. And oh, there's another yeah. blog. There's another, another yeah. blog. Please <laughs> tell us about it. Um, so Everyday Zandi, it's actually weirdly enough. It's called Everyday Zandi. Whoa. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Sorry, real quick. Trey, we're going to, um, yeah, I'm going to get the links from Z and we're going to put it in the comments. Uh, so there's free dive in ZA and there's Everyday Zandi. There's Everyday Zandi. Mm -hmm. And I, I think I'm going to put everything on there because, you know, th then, you know, if I'm looking for free diving, I'll go to free diving ZA. If I'm looking for Zandi, I'll go to everyday Zandi. And, you know, the two often merge, but like with all things, I'm not only one thing, I'm a multitude of things. And I right. feel like everyday Zandi is a safe space to show the multitude of things that I am. Whereas, you know, I, I completely feel you because, um, when I started talking to divers, um, that we've been supporting each other from afar. Like, hey, what's up, brother? What's up, sis? It's it was just like off the cuff. Hey, let's 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 talk, you know. Yeah. And we're having such great conversations that I feel like there's got to be that one gallery of listen to these wonderful people and listen to their story because my personal page sometimes. I post about crickets. Sometimes I post about iguanas. <laughs> like it changes for the day. <laughs> so I completely understand um, where you're coming from with that, and we're looking forward to you know following you on, on this journey and seeing where the where this takes you and what the next adventure is and all the many more adventures I know you have up your sleeves. Now talking about <laughs> <laughs> adventures, what's what's on your bucket list or maybe top two? No, top, yeah, top two. What's on your bucket list for, like, where's one place you want to dive or one place, uh, one experience you want to have that you just haven't gotten around to yet? Thank you for making it top two. Because awesome. when it's one, I'm always like, oh, no. So <laughs> one, one, it's free diving with sperm whales in the Dominican Republic. Wow. I actually didn't um, realize they go in that area. So good to know, yeah. So sperm whales are found there and there's a lot of trips that go out that way for freedivers to actually get out of the boat and be with the sperm whales. Like, I freak out at the thought. So that's, no, that's number one. Number two is uh, freediving with a great white shark in Mexico. Wow. So in South Africa, we've always had great whites, but mm -hmm. there hasn't been a lot of freediving with them or no freediving with them. And if you come across them, they might say, get into a cage. And I don't like the idea of cages. And mm. I know that in Mexico, you are actually able to swim with a great white shark, which would be amazing. You know, you kind of just grab this massive breath at the top and you, and you kind of get yeah. to witness this, this majestic animal with you you know and you kind of get to share space and then you get out of the water and you say what has my life been all my life like what you know it's like you go down with in that one breath you go down you have this encounter you have this experience and i feel like you come you come back up and take your next breath as a different person or at least you gotta have a completely different perspective you know um I'm sh I don't know if you've seen this uh, uh, lady from Hawaii, Ocean Ramsey. I yeah. think she actually did that in Mexico. I can't remember. I have to double check that. But she, um, Big Blue or Big Betty, one of the largest recorded great whites. Um, she she has a great con conservation um, 
outfit out in Honolulu or on the other side of Oahu in Hawaii. Um, a lot of dive, a lot of shark dives or shark free diving, a lot of shark exposure, shark education. And she tracked this shark and she, this thing was massive. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I was fortunate to go free diving with, on one of her trips and there were six, four, five, eight foot sharks, but it was still intimidating. And now to yeah. see her have that moment, I can, I can only imagine just, you know, what you just explained, being one, to understand the animal enough, to understand its space, to, to be there and share that kind of connection that yeah. it is still, you know, well, very copacetic. Everybody says hi, goes away, hi, you know? That's, that's, yeah. that's amazing. And then sperm whales in Dominica, that is actually, now that you mentioned, I don't think I've actually seen an image I hope the first time I see it, it's going to be yours. Because I don't think I've seen an image of someone free diving in, with sperm whales. In Domin I didn't even realize they kind of migrate through that path. I am looking forward to it. And I think, like, the most amazing thing is, like, sperm whales are massive, right? They're mm. massive. But they're yeah. also known to be one of the most, I think they have the biggest mammalian brain. So they are incredibly intelligent. And there's this guy who tells about their encounter, you know, about how they don't come close to scuba divers, but they come to free divers. And the weirdest thing happens, he tells of how um, they'll come around you in a circle and they'll start clicking uh. at you. Like, what? You know, you're kind of thinking, wait, what? <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> I, I, that's... Uh, yeah, because they're the ones that sleep sleep upside down. Like they sleep with their head down, their tails up, and you know it, you go in and it's like, what is this? Some kind of sci-fi movie? Like <laughs> what's going on here? That's. Yeah. Um, I was uh, I got the impression of uh, Nadia Ali. She's a amazing photographer. Amazing photographer. She runs the trips to Tonga, where she free dives with. Gray whales, humpback whales, humpback whales, oh, same thing, right? Um, and, you know, you get really close to them. They're out in their natural habitat, habitats, uh, seeing animals in captivity, whether it's at the zoo or like a marine. If it's not a sanctuary for rehabilitation, it's something that really, really ticks me off. But um, it, it, when I saw that, it was, at the time, I had just started scuba diving, actually. So... It was one of the things that really kind of gave me that extra push, like, you know, um, go, go, you know, try to be a little better at this so you can go and experience these things. Um, I haven't done that yet, and I, you know, still don't have the balls to go <laughs> free diving, but I really appreciate just the natural, um, it's more of a natural, well, except you're doing a, like a CCR or, a, you know, like a rebreather. Uh, yeah. As scuba divers, we just go in and bang around and, hey, what's going on? I'm here. This is human. What's up? <laughs> <laughs> so I really appreciate that part of free divers taking the, the discipline and just the, the, the mindset to be more in one with nature, one uh, to be closer to nature. So that's really, that's really cool. And that's something yeah. that is great that a lot of the whys and how you really shared, and I hope this really inspires someone. Talking about inspiration, what would you advise someone that's getting started, and that someone that's just, or someone that's been thinking about it for a while? Because one of the one of the objectives of divers getting coffee is to you know highlight dive personalities like yourself, so that uh, we can expose this to folks that have been interested, but just don't feel like they can relate to people that have been doing it for a while. Like, you know, just show me, show me someone, show me their human side. And then, <clears throat> and then maybe I'll think about it. What, what would you, what would you, what advice would you give them? So I would say like, don't over like, one, don't overthink. And two, mm. you don't need to be Chad Leclo. You know, you don't need to be the best swimmer in the world in order to be able to free dive. So take the, don't be afraid, take the step closer to it, you know, and I, I don't know, I don't know. I would say don't be afraid. 
You don't have to be like an Olympic swimmer in order to be able to free dive. And I think if nothing else, it's an opportunity to explore your breath like you have never in your life before. And you, once you learn to trust your breath, mm. then the whole world opens up to you. So it's not, free diving is, yes, the water is secondary, but the breath is first. And wow. when I think about how my life changed through free diving, the free diving part is secondary. The breathing part is first. We, the way we breathe currently is generally not, you know, it's, it, we don't breathe deeply. We don't, you know, do our belly breath and we don't understand the power of our breath. And if you can just take a step closer to understanding your breath, and understanding the power of your breath, then the getting into the water and the experience in the water comes naturally. So mm -hmm. what do I teach you on the course? I teach you about your breath. I teach you to trust your breath. I teach you to understand the power of your breath. And then, you know, you get the theory, which you could get anywhere. It's everywhere. But it's the breath that, for me, the most life-changing thing about freediving is the breath. Wow. So <clears throat> that is amazing. So it's actually not, well, it, you know, in parts, it's about like, you know, the theory, the physics, the ocean. But what you're really learning about is yourself. The thing you do every day that you think, yeah, of course I can breathe. <laughs> you know? But that's what you're learning about. That's, that's, uh, that's amazing. That's, yeah. a, that's another great life lesson. Uh, second chat I've had today, one with a, an amazing young man, an amazing brother in, uh, out on the East Coast, who was a diver, pilot, registered nurse in training, almost a doctor, soon to be an astronaut. I don't know what he doesn't do. Wow. And, <laughs> and, wow. and Neil, he's actually named after Neil Armstrong. Uh, but a lot of, a lot of the diving and like what you just explained are life skills and life lessons that we can take away from, you know, learn in the ocean about ourselves, but take away from that and also apply to other things. And as we're saying that, uh, Ernest is watching this while he is waiting for the scuba instructor to start his <laughs> open water course. Okay, that's it. We're done. We're done. Everything is we're good. <laughs> We have inspired Ernest, so thank you. Thank Brother, you. we're looking forward to diving with you. And Trey said, yes, it's absolutely. Let's all go. Yeah, Tonga is, well, it's a little unfair. Tonga is very close to you, <laughs> Trey, <laughs> in Singapore, but it's not that close. I guess I could get there easily. I guess. Well, yeah, but absolutely. We're, we're all trying to get to Tonga. We, we're all... All roads lead to Tonga right now, and eventually we're going to hopefully soon plan and dive together and have adventures together. But in the meantime, we'll continue supporting each other and um, inspiring, hopefully inspiring others to experience these things that a very small percentage of human beings yeah, you can see it on TV, you can see it on YouTube, but it's a completely different experience when you do those things in person and the the takeaways, the, the emotional, the energy takeaways you can get from these things. And I appreciate you sharing that and sharing your story and experiences um, with us tonight or Thank this morning so for you. Yeah, this, it's this morning for us. This is an amazing chat. We're looking forward to all your uh, future adventures. Let's see if we have any other questions real quick or if you have anything you want to just, any afterthoughts you want to share before um, we kind of, you know, time is precious. I know you got a lot, a bunch of things to, to do, to handle. So um, any afterthoughts that you want to share with us? So I love how Profile One is telling us how it's not actually all that far. Like, He's just out here like, I want you all to know that it's not that far. Um, <laughs> what would I want to share? Um, 
when when you get a moment today i hope if you just have a moment uh breathe into your belly and mm. you know everyone will be like yeah it's diaphragmatic breathing yes it's you know it, it's not about that just put your hand on your chest and put your hand on your tummy and try and just push out your your belly like like a child like a child wait 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 so, let me let, let me try it let me let me try that as you're saying can you just start again so breathe in so so put your hand on your chest and put your okay. hand on your tummy and okay. then try and breathe in so that your tummy comes up and it makes a pot don't lift your chest don't okay. lift your chest so okay. like an interesting balance but see, and, and just just hmm. play play around with it just hold on to your chest and hold on to your tummy and just keep on making that pot belly but try and not make your chest move so you'll see when your chest moves oh. moves but your, your hand will move up so the idea is to try and get your belly breathe only through your belly and that's when you know that you're doing beautiful deep breathing and then once you feel comfortable with that i mean you're used to your chest breathing you do it all the time so then you can go from your belly into your chest and into your belly and to into your chest and that will change your life be it if you have a meeting that you're about to go to be it if you're about to do an intense presentation be it mm. if you're angry be it if you're anxious that changes everything it changes the energy completely that is great advice and i appreciate you for that because um i will con- i'm doing this now you i'll probably be doing this all day <laughs> and <laughs> it, it, just trying it once i didn't even get it right but just trying it once actually could be in a like huh this this is pretty interesting and i appreciate thank you drop some gems thank you and <laughs> and i i do hope i personally hope that this give me a six pack but uh Trey wants to know <laughs> it will it will it does <laughs> Trey is saying is a uh, pot belly will let him <laughs> will let him breathe like that which is about oh. the same for me <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god uh this is a this is a, this was an amazing chat um really enjoyed having you on we're looking forward to your adventures uh where can we find you online we We know you have two blogs that we're going to share. So, where can we find you online? So, um I'm not fantastic on Facebook, not at all. Instagram is where you're most likely to find me and in real time. So, mm. Z A N underscore R U double F Y, Zan underscore Ruffy, that's my personal account. Mm-hmm. And then Freediving Z A for the freediving stuff. And then the blog is www.blackmermaid.co.za. and the other one is everydayzandi.wordpress.com You guys heard it here. Go follow hype this this up, follow her, check her out. Yes, no nobody uses Facebook anymore. I mean, if you're on Facebook under 50, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. even know how to use it. I like I don't even know how to use it. Every time I go on there, I'm like what goes where? What yeah. am I supposed to do here? Yeah. <laughs> so sometimes so I recently started going there for like uh groups and maybe like marketing campaigns and stuff like that. Um but I realized how it, the, well first of all I didn't even realize how to use it anymore. But once I figured it out, <laughs> and Tracy what's what's Facebook? Um I literally just my 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 Facebook profile is completely empty. Anytime I log in it just says no updates because I didn't unfriend people I already know. I just unfollowed everybody because I don't want to see anything. So, I go in, it's like me just kind of sliding in through the back door like, okay, I'm just here. Let me just get what I need and move on, <laughs> you know? So, you, you can't you can't be troubled by out of out of sight is out of mind, you know? <laughs> so, True. that's True. that's awesome. Yeah, and I'm going to post all the links in the comments. Really really appreciate your time. looking forward to your adventures such a great conversation uh thank you very much for your time sandy thank you so much hopefully dive soon all righty take care bye bye